Hey, Foot Clan, we're looking at the weekend. We got some of those Monday, Punday reactions. We got these stinkers on this show today. What do you do with Sonny Michelle, Chris Carson, and many more? Are you panicking on some of these guys? Make sure you stay tuned. Oh, Foot Clan, if you are a part of our Foot Clan community, the consistency charts are coming out this week on our website. They are upgraded, amazing, and awesome. If you're not part of of the Foot Clan community, you can get an extra episode every single week. Those consistency charts are flex rankings and so many in-season tools. Check it out at jointhefoot.com. And Foot Clan, don't forget to check out our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, the best sports memorabilia website of all time. All the things on there, all the signatures are always authentic, always certified by the best in the business. Get some awesome swag for your house, for your room, for your office, for your friends. Pristine Auction, and use the code BALLERS when you sign up for $5 for your first purchase. That's Pristine Auction, P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. Hey, it's Ronald Jones II, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome into the show. The Fantasy Footballers back again. Jason Moore is present. And accounted for. Mike, the fantasy hitman. I'm here too. Hey, everybody. I'm Andy Holloway. Welcome into the show Monday, September 23rd. Dang it, Juju. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I had a water bet with Mike this weekend. We bet on the over under line of 77 receiving yards with Juju Smith Schuster. Well, he had 81. But I thought he had 76. <laughs> <laughs> and so I went I went to troll Mike on Twitter and realized I had read his long reception of the day, not his total receiving yards. So Mike won that bet, and then Jason and Mike both had a uh, Josh Gordon and John Ross bet. Jason, you came out on top there. Yeah, look, we're paying out two weeks' worth of water bets this week. Yes. I am happy that I am dry through two weeks and pouring out some water on you two fellas. Yep. No, you'll be wet from last week. No. No, I was dry last week. Were you? Yeah. Is that? Can we confirm Owl that? Owl Borland. Can, uh, I thought give, we were give me all the confirmation. Nope. Thumbs up, thumbs down. All right, we'll check on it. All right. Well, we have a uh, good quick question for you today. We got the weekly rewind fantasy studs on the show today, stinkers of the week. A lot happened this weekend. A lot of weird stuff happened this weekend. But that's fantasy football. That's the way it tends to go. Let's get into some Monday, Punday one-liners. Some reaction from week three of fantasy football. Dude, where's my Carson? Oh. Dude, where's my Carson? Chris, car crash. Uh, yeah. That one's, I like that because it's, you know, it's kind of the fumble, make a mistake. It all went down. Rid, uh, horrific. Horrific. Yes. Ew, Manuel Sanders. Ew, Manuel That's a good one. Here's That's a, a poem. One. We have a poem. Roses are red. Violets are blue. I am the walrus. Goo 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 goo. Goo 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 That's a good one. We've got yeah. Baker Mayday. Yeah, there's a... Oh, my goodness. The Browns. What is happening? They, what are they look really bad. Their offense looks horrendous. Yeah. Well, you were... Pretty darn happy if you had Nick Chubb. That's about it. Baker Mayday. I mean, this team, just reacting to the Sunday night game, it's just gross to watch because if they don't get the ball out of his hand in like one second to some shallow route, he's going to take a sack. They I cannot mean, protect him at all. The offensive you, line is beyond trash right now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where if he gets the ball out of his hands immediately – they don't really move the ball because he's throwing the ball like two yards. And if they don't get the ball out of his hands immediately, then they either throw it away on the run or take yeah. a sack. And he's he's already to the point now where he's got the happy feet. Where like he's he's freaked out. He won't stand in the pocket even 
when there actually is a pocket because he just assumes that it's going to collapse. So he rolls out every play. Yeah, and he rolls out right and only right yes. and only right and, and back as far as possible. Yeah, man, it was tough to watch. And you don't take advantage of what you have with Odell Beckham if, you know, every route is, you know, you got one second to throw the ball. And they seem like they prefer to treat him as a game manager right now because of the offensive line. And so Nick Chubb, a lot of work. It's it's not great. No. But they were in the game and had a chance at the end. But strange play calling down the stretch, a fourth and nine draw. Yeah, that was oh, bizarre. Man, fourth and nine draw. <laughs> and that was a play where – You'll never see this coming. <laughs> that was a play where they looked like they were just going to pretend – to call it. They were trying to get him off sides. Oh. It was weird. All right, a couple more puns. We've got Devontae Saddams. Oh, I, I, okay, yeah. all right. Yes. We're going to do a panic room uh, Wednesday. We'll do a panic room segment, Brooks, and yeah. talk about some of these. We'll talk about them today, too. Speaking of offenses that just look gross, Green Bay is up there for me, too. Yeah, it kind of seems like they basically script the first 10 plays, and it goes well, and then they don't know how to play offense anymore. Lames Connor. Mm. Mm. He'll be in the panic room. Yeah, yeah, he'll be in the panic room. Manuel Jones. Oh. What do you think? Uh, it's hard to argue with, with the output from Daniel Jones. Won the game. Uh, was I would, This was from our good friend of the show, Scott Barrett. That was the second best fantasy scoring day for a rookie quarterback or debut. It looked good. Yes. It looked great. He doesn't quite have the swag of a Gardner Minshew, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> and I saw that on Twitter too. Someone oh, said, really? <laughs> if, it was like if Daniel Jones just had a mustache. Oh, like, he'd be all the rage. Yes, people That's would be. That's probably into it. true. Which it doesn't help to be in the shadow of Eli Manning because that is a very n not <laughs> Gardner Minshew shadow yeah. either. Look, it speaks to the power of the mustache. Right. It's swaggerific. I've been. I'm working on it, man. I go. November is coming up. I, I know. I know. And I, I feel like charity is the right angle to convince the wife. Like, if you don't support. Are you going to rock a mean mustache? I would love to rock the mustache. It's just Rock a, the mustache. <laughs> it's just a tough sell, <laughs> as you might imagine. <laughs> Let's get into the rewind. Weekly Rewind. All right. Weekly uh, Rewind brought to you by Sleeper. I'm I'm really sad. I feel like you skipped two of my favorite puns today. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring them out here uh, for the Foot Clan. Okay. Oh, all right. I I did <laughs> I did skip a couple. Yeah, because you might not like them, but I love them. Ridley Squat. Oh yes, that one was excellent. And then my personal favorite because I did not understand it at first. John Ross the <laughs> Third. You, you said that in a way you sold it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Thanks. Yeah, all right, John we Ross. May, came, we may proceed. Came down to earth. Jason, you should pull up the uh, Robert Wilson tweet that you sent out earlier. Oh, yeah. Some of the strange statistical anomalies of the weekend. Well, Stuff like uh, Austin Hooper was more valuable than Travis Kelsey plus Mark Andrews. Of course. Or Kyle Allen, uh, quarterback for the Carolina Panthers, if you don't know, uh, was more fantasy relevant than Baker Mayfield plus Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, my goodness. Did you guys see... Uh, Matt Harmon's tweet about Kyle Allen. So, just, okay. oh yeah, the kid grew so, up from so the, it's the Cam Newton commercial. The, the old the Cam Newton commercial where the kids talking crap to Cam Newton. He's like, I'm just loosening up my arm, and Harmon's oh. like, Holy crap, that was Kyle Allen. That's pretty funny. That's good. What That's was the good. Saquon? There was one in there about Saquon and Gurley. Yeah, Rex Burkhead ah. scored more than Saquon and uh, Gurley put together. And and here's one, uh, Nelson Aguilar. Scored more than Diggs, Ridley, and Godwin. Oh, we do have a little bit of breaking news. Share it with us. Uh, speaking of Kyle Allen, he's going to start again because Cam Newton is out already. Okay, all right. Well, it was a. This is what happens. You get some games that look at Mike Evans came back around. Chris Godwin had a down week. Yes, overcorrection, big time. Now the problem with Rex Burkhead's story is that. When he is rostered and started on more than 30% of teams, he's obligated to be injured. That's what happens. So That's right fair. now, he's safe. Well, he's, So that, there's a concern coming into the waiver show tomorrow. He is safe as long as James White, uh, his <laughs> wife has another baby next week. 
<laughs> fair, fair enough. Although I think uh, fantasy uh, owners are maybe concerned that Sony Michelle's wife is having a baby as oh well. Oh goodness! Because he was not mentally. Pre- it was a Sony Walkman. That's what I went with. He just same yards per carry as if I just walked into the back of an offensive lineman. I can't imagine he will escape the panic room on Wednesday. No, he he belongs in the panic goodness. room. Goodness. Uh, we didn't get to talk about this. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. What do you th- this is the best because it's done, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Mike. Antonio Brown has been released by the Patriots. He also then went on a Twitter rampage yeah. and said he's not going to be playing, I'm in not the, playing anymore in the NFL anymore. No. Because the he's lost $40 million in the last month is what he said. So Did he actually say I'm not playing in the NFL? Because I thought the yes. tweet said, like, I'm not doing this anymore or something. It was very generic. Uh, I think he said he's not playing in the NFL anymore. Well, that would that would that would make this a a done deal, right? <laughs> of course. Yeah, there was some news right before he did that that some teams were interested. Once the dust settles on his investigation situation, but Antonio Brown's not a Patriot anymore. Do you hold him? Do you hold him? Somebody asked me on the weekend before this tweet whether they'd spend a dollar fab on him, and I said yes, a dollar fab, but. At this point, no, I'm not going to put him on my – because he's not IR eligible. So I don't think I'm going to put him on my bench, no. So the, the, the tweet about him quitting the NFL was, was one of the only tweets that made it through the weekend without him deleting it. I don't know if you guys were following. Oh, he went the delete route? Oh, he went the delete route thinking that the internet is deletable. <laughs> Sorry, Antonio Brown, it's not. Everyone has already seen it. There are hard copies of it everywhere. But he did – the one that he left up starts with – quote, will not be playing in the NFL anymore. Yeah. Ooh. I imagine every time he tweets, he opens his front door and Drew Rosenhaus is standing there. <laughs> and that's who deletes the tweets. He's like, I am trying to make my commission yes. on this contract. Saquon Barkley, been diagnosed. Well, hold on. I guess we'll talk about the Patriots outside of Brown. Okay. Uh, Philip Dorsett, uh, three wide sets. He's going to be out there. He deserve- He should be rostered. If he wasn't picked up after this news, then he's going to get picked up on the waiver show tomorrow. And, and, and on top Josh- of that, Julian Edelman left the game with a chest injury. The x-rays were negative, but he's still going to have more more tests. I mean, Philip Dorsett is, will be a high-priority pickup for the weekend. No doubt. Or for S- the week. Speaking of high-priority pickups, Wayne Gallman. Saquon Barkley diagnosed with a high ankle sprain. He couldn't put weight on it. He was in a boot with crutches. He's undergoing an MRI today, and the Giants are obviously expecting to be without Saquon Barkley for the next several weeks. He was hopping off the field in jubilation after Manuel Jones won that game for the Giants, but Saquon's going to be out a while. How crazy is it that Manuel Jones won that game with no OBJ anymore and no Saquon in, in that game? Well, he had Evan Ingram, and he... And he had Sterling Shepard. Yeah, Shepard out. balled out. Yeah. yeah. T.Y. Hilton did not return to the game after suffering a quad injury. He was a basically a game-time decision with a quad injury. This does not bode well for his prognosis for next week because if he couldn't make it through this game, which, by the way, very productive. He did the very fantasy-friendly, convenient. Yes, he did. Get the fantasy points, then leave the game. But quad injury, we'll monitor that. Vance McDonald suffered a shoulder injury. LaShawn McCoy exited with the ankle injury. This is the same ankle that he almost didn't play because of. Yeah, he he also did the nice thing, gave everyone a very stout fantasy game, even though there was it was a wild ride with Shady McCoy on Sunday morning because they did the the came out from the media, oh, it looks like Daryl Williams is gonna get the start and he'll be backed up by Darwin and then Shady is the third guy. So I, there's panic in the streets. Do you play Shady McCoy? Luckily if you did, he came through with a big day, but Daryl Williams if if Shady's out with Damian Williams, you got to follow the snaps. And Daryl Williams was the guy. And he was also very productive because, of course, whoever plays for Andy Reid puts up massive fantasy points. Had a big run in that game, and he definitely would be the back to own and start. And if both McCoy and Williams were out, you could take, take the shot on Darwin oh, yes. breaking a big play. Alshon, Djax didn't play. Devin Singletary, Cam Newton didn't play. Jordan Reed... Some Duh. within the organization believes that he's never going to play again, according to some sources this week. We'll monitor that. 
But that makes Vernon Davis at least like a, a glance for a season-long tight end, sure. like low-end guy. A reminder, bye weeks are coming up. Jets 49ers are on bye next week. I read this morning the Jets have scored on two of 36 possessions this year under the masterful hand of Adam Gaze. Yeah, I mean, he's an offensive mastermind. That's what we've seen over the, you know, since Peyton left and he wasn't. Yes, and I, I look, I want to pile on. Trust me, you know I like to take my shots at Mr. B-Hole. It's fun. Come on. <laughs> Pile on. I, Everybody's but doing it. In his defense, his quarterback, it apparently had the – he had mono during week one. He talked about how his body basically shut down as soon as that game was done. I thought you were saying Luke Falk had mono no. this past week. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, well, no, well. No, no. No, he had Luke Falk. Yeah. Well, like, that, 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 That's that, what he had. He had that he is himself. So – it's it's hard to He does deserve mostly a pass. It's uh, just yes. a, quite a statistic to you know, for instance, the Panthers had Kyle Allen this weekend. They got to play the Cardinals. True. Though. Weekly rewind news and notes brought to you by the Sleeper app. Do not miss a single piece of fantasy football breaking news. We're gonna talk studs. Before we do, we want to thank today's sponsors keeping this independent podcast going. And listen. We want to thank Lightstream. It's a fact. Refinancing credit card balances can lower your interest rate and save you money. This is just a common sense situation. A lot of credit cards out there, you're paying you know, interest rates over 19% APR. Basically, what Lightstream does is they qualify you for a consolidation loan with a rate as low as 5.95%. So you can combine high interest rate credit cards into a low interest rate refinance loan. You can save thousands in interest. This is a good way to get out of debt uh, the right way. And there are no fees, no application fees, no origination fees, no transaction fees. And uh, you can get your money as soon as the day you apply. The application is really easy. You can do it on your phone. And they believe that people with good credit deserve a better loan experience. That's what it's all about. And the only way you can get that discount, which is a 0.5% uh, auto pay discount, is to go to lightstream.com slash footballers. Subject to credit approval. Rate includes a 0.5 auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply. And offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash footballers for more information. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash footballers. And we'd like to thank Quip for sponsoring today's show, ladies and gentlemen. Quip it! <laughs> Quip it good! Simplify the morning and evenings with an electric toothbrush from Quip. It has timed sonic vibrations. For they offer an effective clean that's gentle on your sensitive gums in just two minutes, twice a day. And the multi-use cover works as a stand and mounts to the mirrors. I've got my Quip on the mirror. It's up out of the way. It's it's handy. It's quick draw in the morning when I need it. And the lightweight compact design means you can bring it along with you on those last or the last second summer weekend getaways. And the brush heads, Fulkland, this part is sensational. The brush heads are automatically delivered on a dentist recommended schedule of three months or every three months for just five bucks. You don't have to think about it. They just send you a new brush head. I love my quip. We all love our quips. Look, and it's perfect for getting back into a routine. Quip starts at just $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash footballers right now, you can get your first refill pack for free. That's your first refill pack free at getquip.com slash footballers. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. All right, let's talk about the good before we talk about the bad. What do you say? This And this week had a lot of people, a lot of fantasy Explosions. players, like go off where you ran into certain players this week and it was... Yeah, I mean, if you had Mike look Evans... Forward, look forward. If you forward had Mike Evans, next... you won, right? Uh, well, you should. Uh, I know someone who had Mike Evans and scored 150 in a league where you're trying to get to triple digits, and they lost. Do you, uh, do you want to share that person's name? Uh, it's Jason Moore. <laughs> that was me. That was me because Gen Papa Josh put up 170. Yeah. That speaks to Mike's point. There are a lot of huge scorers huge. this week. One of them came from Russell, Russell. Wilson. Russell. Oh, Russell. man, Russell Wilson went to town. If you just took his passing stats – he had a great game, 400 yards and two. That's good by itself. Including a last-second Disley. 51 rushing yards yeah. and two rushing touchdowns. That's good by itself. 
Good thing he gets to play Arizona next week. <laughs> yeah, start your Seahawks. Daniel Jones, the big game. It's unbelievable, man. It was it was a sensational performance. Baltimore's defense stood no match. Well, they was I, no match. They held up like for a quarter. You say Baltimore's defense, Andy? He what was did moving I say? On. To what move, did I? He was moving on to Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. Thanks, bro. I I was confused for a second as well. It sounded like we were talking about Daniel Jones, and that Baltimore's defense stood no chance. Just I was making sure. Just making Would sure. you stream Daniel Jones? To go next, back to that conversation for, yes. Bro for Brooks next week against Washington, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if he actually pans out. It it's not just the the passing. I mean, he had the big plays, but he looked extremely mobile and was doing things that Eli Manning has never even thought about doing. <laughs> <laughs> the it, thing about it is, if Saquon's out, then it's really gonna be on his shoulders next week against Washington, and their defense has been through. Two weeks, and we'll see him tonight. Really, really bad. And you can you can talk about oh well, this was the Tampa Bay defense, but Tampa Bay's defense They've looked solid, really yeah. good week one and week two. So, kudos to Daniel Jones, Patrick Mahomes, big game against Baltimore. Deshaun Watson came back for a big game. It wasn't looking great early. I think I glanced over at Mike. He said, "Man, it's been a couple tough weeks for Deshaun Watson, fantasy wise." And then, and then a broken eighty yard play to a tight end. Yeah, then it was it it, it changed. Kyle Allen, Jameis Winston. Winston with his hey first big fantasy game. This is the upside for Jameis Winston that you were looking for. He led them back to win the game, by the way. Daniel Jones ends up with the win. 34-yard field goal. Shanked yes. by Tampa after Winston threw another pass to Mike Evans, let him down to win. Too bad they don't have Roberto Aguayo. Am I right? Mm. Oh, gosh. Am I right? Nope, you're wrong. <laughs> Matt Ryan, 29 for 34 for 304 and 3. This was a very good game for Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan is very good. Uh, some honorable mentions here. Dak, Carson Wentz, Jacoby Brissett was uh, surgical in this one. 28 for 37. Big big game for him. Brady, Rivers, Kyler. Kyler had a really nice start to this game. Looked like he was on his way to a top five finish on the week. And then uh, the wheels fell off. Yeah, but he still had a good game. Two picks late as the offensive line broke down and he was... You know, we talk about Baker panicking and having the happy feet and the, the eyes that are dropping because they're scared of pressure. That's what it looked like at the end of this game with, with Kyler Murray. But it was good to see him yes. rush. You know, he the, he's supposed to be this mobile rushing quarterback that you hadn't seen the first two weeks. Then he puts up basically 70 yards rushing. That's monstrous. He, he definitely had a great fantasy day. All right, at the running back position, Mark Ingram was a monster. He was a beast. Great start to the season for him. He's the RB4. Alvin Kamara oh my muscled goodness. his way to dominance against Seattle. This stinking guy is so good. I mean, it's you just assume, oh, Teddy Bridgewater, they'll slow down. The touchdown opportunities won't be there. Pfft. Alvin Kamara, Kamara is, says, I make my own touchdown opportunities. He was just, I've never watched a guy who can't be tackled by the first guy. It's a rule. It's like a physics like, they're going to come up with some new scientific law why Alvin Kamara can't be tackled by the first man. It's called Vaseline. Right. That's what I was like. Is he buttering his uniform? <laughs> um, by the way, so the Mark Ingram, I mean, the start to the season for Mark Ingram looks legit. He never, you know, he's never in that, like, 20, 25 carry category, but just so efficient. I just received a trade offer in the listener league for Mark oh, Ingram. My. I have Mark Ingram and the Walrus. Okay. And somebody wants to send me James Conner, Sony Michelle, and Vance McDonald. <laughs> Wait. James Conner. Wait, what? Sony Michelle. Yeah. And Vance McDonald. Yeah, before the season, that would have seemed pretty nice, right? <laughs> what? It just tells you how things are have changed. Goodness. Goo 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 goo. Yes. <laughs> Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, he's good. Philip Lindsay. Philip Lindsay had his first big game of the year. Has Jacksonville yeah, coming on, up on my bench? Yeah, and he, he if he gets rotated into starting lineups this week. Now Royce Freeman missed some time. Royce had a big start to this game. I I think this could be a bit of a a trap play against Jacksonville next week. Trying to throw Lindsay back out there. Everyone moves him from the bench to the starting lineup. But if Royce is healthy and they play Jacksonville, are you excited about Philip no. Lindsay? No, I'm more excited about Philip Lindsay in two weeks against the Chargers if somehow Royce Freeman is still dealing with his injury. But I, 
Even if he's not. Against I'm, the Chargers, I think you can I think Philip Lindsay will be a good yeah? play. Okay. Uh Dalvin Cook against Oakland, sixteen for one, ten and one. He basically sat the fourth quarter as that well. That is correct, yeah. He was just so good. They were up by so much, they're like, let's not get our star injured. He's over on the sideline with his helmet off. Fantasy owners are crying. But he can't cry too much because he put up 100 and a touchdown. Now, where are you guys with uh, Alexander Madison as as a level of handcuff? If you have Dalvin Cook now, we're three weeks in. Madison looks looks solid when he comes in to, for, to clean up for Dalvin Cook when Dalvin Cook has already done the work. But with Dalvin Cook's injury history, the way that this Minnesota Vikings offense is running, if you have Dalvin Cook, are you 100% stashing Madison at this point? It's close. It's close, but I don't think that they're going to hand him the kind of workload Cook has if Cook goes out. I think they'll they'll work some other backs into it, so I think the top he, side will be gone. He did have only four fewer carries than Dalvin Cook this yeah. week. Yeah, that's because yeah. Cook was out during the fourth quarter when they were just – Running well, the ball. I'm just saying, like, if Dalvin Cook, they took him out, They then they gave Alexander Madison 12 carries that they could have worked some other people in. I get what you're saying about the, the offense. I mean, if you want to roster him, I don't have any problem with that. I just don't think – I think they'll use, you know, more than Madison if he goes down, but the offense is going to be through the running game, so I'm, I'm fine with that. Dalvin Cook has the injury history, so I think having Madison on your team makes sense. Smart. Tony Pollard. That's the name I was yeah, really Tony, wanting you to bring up. Yeah, Tony Pollard, 13 for 103 and 1. Uh, I think what he's done for me is establish himself as a league winner in the event that, you know, Zeke were to go down. So if you are, you know, there's only a handful of guys in that situation where you know, like, if the starter's gone, this guy's going to win. This guy's a top five type of player because if you give Tony Pollard all the work in Dallas on that offense, it's going to be incredible. Now, they played Miami this week, and the majority of his production was in mop-up duty, but you know, what are your thoughts on Tony Pollard? Zeke had 19 carries. Uh, Tony Pollard had uh, 13 carries. Similar situation to Madison towards the end, but looked really good. Yeah, we are, we are at the point. And to go back to the Alexander-Madison question, I was bringing that up because handcuffs are hard to identify – Sometimes you think you have the guy, and it, it turns out you don't. Sometimes you have a guy who just doesn't have the skill to get it done. If I have Dalvin Cook, I want Madison on my bench at, at this point of the season. And Tony Pollard, I want him on my bench if I don't have Zeke. Like If I have Zeke, I want, I want to ha have my handcuff as well. If I don't have him, I want to stash Tony Pollard. He may just sit on your bench forever. And, and nothing comes of it. But Andy's right. If the circumstances break where Zeke is going to miss time, then Tony Pollard does enter into that league winner type of a category where he got him for basically nothing. He's still on some waiver wires. Hopefully, If you're in a savvy league, he's not. But you should take a peek and see if he's there. The odds of Tony Pollard taking the field are also slightly more than injury, too, with Zeke. Just being real with... His, oh, with his passive, uh, just off the field stuff. Like sure. you have a slightly higher percentage chance of something happening there. Now it's a complicated time for that though, Jason. It's a, uh, you know, you're going to get into bye weeks. You're going to have your bench is a little bit more important in terms of moving guys in and out of it. Are you on the same boat as Mike, where he's just like, even if you don't have Zeke, Pollard's got to be on your bench. Yeah, I mean it's it, yes ish in the sense that I agree. But it's always going to be by comparison of who you have to drop, who else is available on the waiver wire. He's certainly one of the many people out there that appear like they should be rostered, and it's just a matter of your makeup. Like you said, if you've got a bye week and you've got to drop someone and you need to drop Pollard, you got to do what you got to do. Right, but and to speak to that, at with the bye weeks coming up, I'm not like loading up like, oh, I'll check out this wide receiver four. I have that I'm going to play in two weeks. Right. Like, you, no. Hold your running backs, drop I'll, your wide receiver. I'll figure out the wide receiver position that week if it comes to that. 27 touches for Nick Chubb as well. I'll and mention that. Seven targets. That is that is nice. Yeah. Yep. He, he was just a three-down guy in this one. Marlon Mack had a nice game. Has Oakland next week. Frank Gore did his thing. Valuable for fantasy. Scored. Had... Uh, what, just under 90 yards uh, of total offense. Rex Burkhead, 11 carries for 47 and a touchdown, 6 for 22 
through the air, but James White was inactive in this one. I still I can't figure this team out. Sonny Michelle has been atrocious to begin the year. Had a touchdown in this one. Had a five-yard touchdown. Ended up nine for 11 on the day. Two out of three games this year, he's had embarrassing stat yes. lines, not evading tackles. I don't know what to make personally of the snaps Ugh. in New England because this they have been in complete and utter blowouts right. to start the year. Next week, they have what should be a harder game against Buffalo in Buffalo. Then they you know, travel to Washington and then the Giants, which are not tough matchups. So I don't know if they're managing Sonny Michelle's snaps. I don't know if they are upset with Sonny Michelle based on efficiency. I don't know what to make of the backfield snap situation, but you you know, you know, haven't been happy with Sonny. N no, not at all. It's He's the, in the panic room. The Rex Burkhead out-snapping Sonny Michelle, that's one of those Patriot things where you're like, yeah, well, of course. This other name, though, who out-snapped Sonny Michelle, Brandon Bolden. Their special teams running back out-snapped the first-round pick, Sony Michelle. Like, it's... That doesn't weird me out, though, in a game where... Oh, you, it weirds me you, out, man. You brought your back... Why play... The, you brought your backup quarterback into the game. So why would you be not doing the same thing at the running back position? You but, brought in... You know, the, eventually you had to bring Brady back because of a pick six, but you brought in all your reserves. So the snap count doesn't But Brandon weird Bolden me out. was in during the beginning of the game as well. This, this wasn't a complete product of they blew him out okay let's put Brandon Bolden in it was no Bolden was in at the beginning of the game getting work yeah I mean here's the thing the history of the Patriots say okay Rex Burkhead 56 snaps Sony Michelle 17 I throw the, I almost throw that out the window because we've seen this for years with Bill Belichick Whatever his game plan against that matchup is and what he deems, it could completely flip next week, and you're confident in Rex Burkhead, and then he goes out and gets five snaps for seemingly no reason. We've we've dealt with that for 10 years, and so, uh, you know, it, it's really a matter of Sony still is getting touchdown opportunity. I mean, we'll talk about him on Wednesday, but should you be a little concerned? Yes. You should definitely be concerned. Yes. But, I mean... Where where are you at long term with him on the basis of like to me I I've seen him run well throughout a playoffs so I yeah, I just don't know what to make of this so far he's not a bad back even though he's had bad games and has not performed yet yeah you know to me very concerned but if there are owners out there that are truly panicked I I might I might try to pick him up he certainly doesn't seem at at a minimum he's not somebody that is a guarantee week in and week out so that's that's a problem. Yeah, and Joe Mixon, throw his name out there as another, I mean, real big bounce back. Yes, just because he's stunk on the year. Yeah, and Aaron Jones had a couple touchdowns. Couldn't run the ball, ten for nineteen, but had two touchdowns. So there you go. Wide receivers: Mike Evans, Keenan Welcome Allen, back. Cooper Cup. Welcome back to fantasy relevance. Don't Mike think you Evans. can buy him low. No, I don't think you can. Mike Evans, 8 for 190 and 3. Keenan Allen was everywhere. 13 receptions for 183 and 2 on 17 targets. That's a lot of targets. I mean, Keenan Allen, it was so frustrating watching this game if you have anyone not named Keenan Allen because Phillip Rivers only has eyes for him. It was truly outlandish. No matter what the coverage was, no matter what the down and distance was, it was just, where's Keenan Allen? I'm throwing him the ball. He is currently on pace for 224 targets, which I would say is impossible, except of course I watch it, the game. You know, it's a weird thing, too, because this is a team that's gotten off to a bad start. Hey, guys, who does Keenan Allen play next week? Miami. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, he, Mike, you and I both had him as our number one wide receiver this past week Yeah, I was, in our rankings. I was pretty excited for Keenan Allen. I, can, can we work out something with our rankings so, like, there's – Something higher than number one. Oh, for next week? For next week. That's so where like, you're you at? get a crown? Yes. Yeah. The uh, So Mike Evans, Keenan Allen, Cooper Cup, 11 for 102 and two on 12 targets. Cooper Cup, you talk about a quarterback having eyes for somebody. Jared Goff's a different player with Cooper Cup in the lineup. Yes. And Cooper Cup had 12 targets, caught 11 of them. Brandon Cooks had 12 targets, caught eight of them. And then Woods uh, had eight targets, caught Woods three getting, of them. Woods was getting like these... 
the, the, the shoveled targets. It well, just, he's never been a big play guy. He always needs the volume. You need those target totals for Woods to give you the stability. But it, I'm saying like they were it was it was frustrating because we were watching for for our matchup in NFL League One, we needed Robert Woods to go off and Cooper Cup to do nothing. It didn't work out that way. But so I was scrutinizing the Robert Woods targets more than I was the other players, but it was frustrating to see the quality of Robert Woods' targets versus the it other guys. It seemed like every time he threw to Woods, it was like he couldn't get it over the linebackers yeah. and the ball was tipped up. It was it was very frustrating. Uh, Cooper Cup was open by about five yards every time that oh, he yes. was throwing the ball. Yes. That was one thing I noticed in that game. So, yeah, it's it's interesting. That offense can obviously support all three guys, but Cup seems back and ready to go. Yes, and he they does. have Tampa next week at home. Hot Lucky. My goodness. Oh, yeah. Tyler Lockett, 11 for 154 and 1. The game script was perfection for Seattle and Russell to have that monster game because they got blown out and were th the whole second half was CJ Procise in the backfield and Tyler Lockett downfield. You know, this is a game where David Moore returned, but Lockett had 14 targets. He's sitting at wide receiver 10 on the year. And he gets Arizona next week. Yes. And Russell Wilson's not going to throw the ball 50 times against Arizona. That seems very unlikely. 60? <laughs> sure. Well, their defense is not really – no, it's, it's looking not, good. It's, so it's it's not working out for for Pete Carroll's game plan, or your bet against Russell Wilson. True. All right, that can count for Cooper Cup and Amari Cooper. How about Ooh. that? Amari Cooper six for eighty eight, two, two touchdowns. He's the wide receiver four on the year, and he's been consistent through three games. He's the guy. In Dallas, Sterling Shepard, 7 for 101 on the big comeback attempt by Daniel Jones. We'll see what happens against Washington this next week, you know, whether Daniel Jones has another big game or not. Yeah, I mean, he's a he is, to me, a great pickup. If he's on waivers and you could pick up Sterling Shepard and start him, no Golden Tate still in, in a matchup against Washington where Shepard's the clear one, him and Evan Ingram, but the clear wide receiver one. I, I'm I'm all about Shepard. Now, another reminder, pick up Golden Tate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Julio had another big game, has four touchdowns on the season. You don't need to talk about Julio. He's just really good. MVS, it was an MVS week. Marquez valdez Scanling. where are you at with him? Six for 99 and a touchdown on 10 targets. Has Philadelphia on Thursday, so you'd have to make a decision on starting him early this week. Uh, at the, With Philadelphia being the matchup, it's it's – not the worst play. He did have the forty-plus yard touchdown on the the uh, the Aaron Rodgers special, where he gets the the team to jump offside, so he gets the free play and it hit. So it was a forty-yard touchdown. I like he's a fine wide receiver three play. The nice guess, thing is, week. if you look at the targets, he's in the role that is both valuable as the downfield uh, wide receiver, and he's higher up in the you know the 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 you know the target counts are great he's on pace right. for 112 targets he had 10 targets this game so if you've got both uh, you know uh, air yards mixed with targets mixed with Aaron Rodgers I uh, you know you've got to be somewhat happy with MBS through three weeks McCall Hardman two for 97 and a touchdown where are you at with Hardman and Robinson they are must starts when until Tyreek Hill is back then it will be it will be hard to make that call. Like the week that Tyreek Hill is It'll be hard, back, man. <laughs> oh, nice. I see what you did. That it could be this week. Yeah, it could be this week. We'll, we'll see what the news says. But it's going to be a, a very difficult call with Demarcus Robinson and McCole Hardman when Tyreek Hill is back because who loses their spot to Tyreek? Yeah, it's interesting because I think Hardman serves a unique purpose in the offense. Of being just – the fastest man alive. Yeah, you know, but things like jet sweeps, you know, that you, you'd you involve Hardman on a jet sweep with or without Tyreek Hill available and active. You know what I mean? Sure. Where Robinson steps into kind of a more complete wide receiver role for that team. So that makes him the more consistent target guy with Tyreek out. It'll be it'll be interesting. I don't I think both of them are shaky starts once Sure. Once he gets back. It, once because uh, Watkins led the team in targets for an, an, yet another week. It just 
the touchdowns didn't go his way again. Yeah, yeah. If, if I had to play one of those two uh, once Tyreek's back, it would be Demarcus Robinson. Just okay. because week one, you saw him on the field for 63% of the snaps. He appears to be the third wide receiver. So, I, you know, that's not to say McCole Hartman won't come on for – all he needs more important snaps. Oh yeah, all he needs is uh, you know he only had every two receptions. <laughs> every snap for the Chiefs is an important snap. We talked about Dorsett. He was six for fifty three and one, and could have more work with obviously AB being gone, and then the injury to Edelman. Juju Smith Schuster was three for eighty one and a touchdown. Brooks put him in the stud muffins, but I don't think that's how I feel about Juju. Now he obviously one play. It was a seventy six yard play. For a touchdown. So he was two for five outside of it. How do you feel about Juju I was, with this game? Is this a sell-high opportunity for him because of the touchdown? It certainly could be because Mason Rudolph looked real bad. Like, really, really bad. I was so disappointed with Mason Rudolph. And you have to be worried. as a, The Steelers' defense looked great. I mean, five turnovers, but they lost the game because the offense could not get it going with Mason Rudolph. Now, this next week, they've got Cincinnati. So maybe you'll have another sell-high opportunity. The following weeks are much rougher. I'm, I'm concerned as someone that was really excited about James Conner and Juju Smith-Schuster. Without Big Ben, this offense is scaring me. All right, tight ends, some monster performances. Mike, you had Greg Olson as your start of the week, and he had... He torched the Arizona Cardinals, who have yet to determine whether tight ends exist. Did you uh, start of the week, Will Disley? Nope. I already got it in the dark. Are you my freaking man. kidding me? I am 100% <laughs> telling the truth. He is already in next week's dock. Oh, Big Montana. You're darn right, start of the week. I was saying before he got the. Uh, Dang it. Before Big Montana got the last second touchdown. It was still a nice follow up game from Will Disley. Five, it was. For, five for 58 before the touchdown, seven targets. But also, you know, and they just don't have reliable pass catching options. They have guys that can come out and be, you know, Jerome Brown gets you two catches or Metcalf a couple and, you know, David Moore two catches. But red zone wise, it, you know, Lockett's a little guy. Lockett scores from far away. Will Disley, he that, scores up close. That Will Disley touchdown at the end of the game where the game was over multiple times, but then penalties just kept drawing out the game. And I, I believe they got a free snap with zero seconds yes. on the clock. Yes. That was the most disgusting <laughs> garbage time fantasy touchdown I've ever seen in my life. Like, what were they? Oh, the garbage <laughs> man. Thank you. Yeah. What it, was Seattle doing? There really isn't a point there. You know, like, the, no. you, you do not accomplish anything. You, I've always, you know, other than the potential for injury. That's that's where I lean. It's so I'm, weird. Like you should really take a knee. Like, this am is, I wrong? No, no, you're, you're not I'm, wrong. I am totally on board with you. I'm like, you're not playing Madden, where it's, oh, I'm gonna score on you no matter what. I'm gonna cut down the lead. Well, like, like no, you still lost. You still lost by a good amount of points. You sh you well, like in fantasy, at least like total points scored earns you something, right? Like maybe it's a tiebreaker or, or something of that. You don't get anything for that. It's we we feel better about ourselves. The defense that had they were done, you but just, laying like, get, laying down feels weird too. I mean, I'm a competitive person. Feels super weird to not go out and try to execute the offense and do what you're supposed to do. But because it's the NFL and injuries can happen, it yes. seems risky business. Yeah. So hey, we've got another spectacular performance. Oh yeah, yeah. go 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 go! This is Darren Waller. 13 for yes. 134 on yes. 14 targets. He's caught 89% of the passes thrown his way this season. Well, okay. They're five yards from the line of scrimmage. It's Doesn't like, matter. It's like you should catch them. PPR he, machine. Through the first three weeks of the season, he is one reception. He's got 26 receptions through the first three weeks. That is one reception short of the best for any tight end over the last 50 years. I mean, he is – he's just – he's half of this offense. His target share is in the 30s, the 40 percentile. That's ridiculous. He is the potpourri on the poop experience that is that offense. I mean, he is – And it's delightful. Oh, uh, an every week start. Yes. The real question will be, now that Mark Andrews had a down week, how people with both of those guys decide who to start moving forward. 
Waller is just so safe. Yes. Well, but has he scored this season? I don't, I, I I don't, don't recall. I don't a think touchdown. he scored, but who cares? Austin Hooper had a nice week. Evan Ingram went down the sideline the way Juju did, six for 113. He's the number one tight end on the year, Evan Ingram. He's had two monster weeks and a somewhat down week last week, which was still fine for tight ends. Which was tight really ends. strange. Uh, right. Everything seemed to line up for him to succeed last week. But, yeah, I mean, Evan Ingram is – No Saquon helps him. Those, sure. those little outs being being the release valve that isn't – you know, you don't have Saquon anymore for that. I think Ingram stays in that spot for a little while. So, all right, you guys want to – Talk about the, Let's do talk it. about the bad stuff. Stinkers of the week, presented by Odor Eaters. All right, we already talked about Baker, but can you drop Baker? Yes, I yeah, I think I would. Move Last on, week yeah. he was more of a trade Baker. Now it's a drop Baker. Yeah, I mean, I think you Baltimore. No, thank you. Yeah, the, yeah. The quarterbacks are streamable off of waivers. I don't think you need to be holding on to Baker when this offensive line is as bad as it's been with an upcoming schedule that doesn't look great. Basically, if if he doesn't throw a slant that Beckham scores on last week, he has two of the worst fantasy weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. He was one of the most fearful, you know, in our ultimate draft kit, he was a bust. That and did that, not feel it, good for us. It was us. so scary because it's like, you know, he could he could come and light the world on fire with Odell Beckham, but and I think he's a great quarterback. Yeah, I, think I mean he's I do too. In I a really bad this position is, right now. Yeah, it's a little bit. Of, I mean he's he's definitely. It's it's everybody. It's his offensive line. It's Freddie right. Kitchens. It's his execution because Baker made plentiful mistakes yesterday. Bad decisions. Constantly bringing the ball back down. You know, right. being gun shy. I, I wanted to call him Baker Maythrow because he never oh, he didn't decide to throw the ball at all. But man, when they were down at the goal line, there was a play when they stacked the three wide receivers up, and Odell Beckham was just breaking to the corner, wide open in the end zone, and he just never even looked his way. Yeah, my fantasy team appreciated that. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, is this what we have with Aaron Rodgers now? Is I, he just a middling? Um, I guess, man. It, 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 low end wide receiver one or quarterback one? Once again. Well, I don't even know if he's a quarterback one at this point. Like, it was the same thing as last week, where the game started, the the Packers, it, it, Rodgers. It looked like okay, here we go. Rodgers going to have a big fantasy day. Finally, started like I said with that forty yard touchdown to Mark Wes, and then the offense just falls apart. Well, and that 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 was a broken play. I mean, that was yeah. a play with an offside, so it wasn't even like they drew up a deep ball there. He just said, "Oh, okay, I got a free play. I'm going to chuck it." Outside of that, ooh. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Aaron Rodgers currently on pace for 3,500 yards. That's in today's NFL, 4,000 is like... How many yards? 3,500? Yeah, he's on pace for 3,451. And 3,600 grimaces after the games. Yep. That, he just doesn't look happy. I mean, his yards, 203, 209, 235. Which in the past it's be was okay. fine because he had four or five touchdowns in those games, yes. and he's not doing it anymore. And it's hurting Devonte Adams significantly. All right, I think this is the section right here: the running back stinkers that have the most question marks. Because you draft running backs, they're rare. You know, it's harder to find running backs that are reliable. And several of these guys are in the category of players that you know people thought would have reliable production at the position. Todd. Gurley. Holy crap. 14 for 43, no catches. Holy crap. Why aren't they using him in the screen game? I mean, he's out there on the field. It's not like they're protecting him and not giving him the ball. They gave him 14 carries, but he has dominated in the screen game for years, and this season, they're just like, yeah, let's get rid of that. Maybe maybe that'll help his knee or something. I mean, it makes no sense, but he actually just he doesn't look as good. The offensive line certainly isn't opening things up like it did in years past. Maybe that's more of the problem. It's just those big plays for Gurley were the linchpins of his production, and the line is not – I mean, you brought it up. The line is not looking the same. Well, your big plays and – And Cooper Cup is and healthy. And goal line opportunities, yeah. which, man, it's it, – it does not feel good to have Todd Gurley because are you going to trade Todd Gurley away for peanuts? No. I, you, I'm not. Would you trade Todd Gurley away for this next guy? Chris – Carson. Chris Carson, 15 for 53, had yet another fumble in this game, which 
changed the the entire picture of the game because they were in a position where he had just broken off a 26-yard run. They were down a score. They were driving to tie the game. Instead, it gets scooped, scored on, and they're playing from behind the duration. He lost the game for the, for the Seahawks. I believe that. The defense did allow points. He has cost them in a, a meaningful, yes, tangible way for a couple of weeks. So C.J. Procise was out there the remainder of the game pretty much. Chris Carson came out to not get a f fourth down conversion. You know, this is something that Carson's a my guy for me. Everything was set up for Chris Carson this week. Rashad yes. Penny was out. You know, Carson uh, had the opportunity. He fumbles again. He's lost three fumbles this year. And so I went and, you know, I'm watching the post-game press conference and listening to Pete Carroll. And, you know, you try to figure – you try to read between the lines. Obviously, Carroll basically said, look, he needed some time to – some space. He said something to that ex extent. <laughs> That's why he gave him the bench. He needs to kind of work through that mentally. He needed a timeout. Now, he, he did come out and defend him. And he said – He's had three of the best punch outs that he's ever seen. That's what Pete Carroll said in terms of the fumbles that he's lost. And he said he even pointed out that he was covering up in he preparation was doing the right thing, yeah. for that, but the punch out was perfect. Mm, so he's calling him weak. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and then so That's Russell like Russell Wilson came out and said he's the, you know, one of the best running backs in football. We have full confidence and Pete Carroll came out and said, "Hey, we have confidence in him to be back out there and get it fixed." Has Arizona next week? Could that be the salve for Chris Carson? It Here's, could 100% be the salve, but if Rashad Penny is ready to go next week and Rashad Penny is the starting running back once they have their first offensive snap, that won't be a, a shock. What I'm confident in is that no one on the Arizona Cardinals can punch out the ball. <laughs> so I don't worry about the fumble next week. And to answer your earlier question – would you trade Todd Gurley for Chris Carson? I would. I would rather have Chris Carson oh. than Todd Gurley. Yeah, it's it's actually strange to look at this game and say Carson got 15 carries in it. It felt like he had negative one carry. That's how the game felt. James Conner, 13 for 43, 4 for 14. <clears throat> Is it time to panic on Chris or on James Conner? Yeah, yes. yeah. Look, you have to panic. And James, I love James Conner like Jason was talking about. I was, I'm all in, or was all in on James Conner. But the the hope was Mason Rudolph can just be competent, and he was very incompetent. I know that was just one start for Mason Rudolph, but if his quarterback is going to be that bad, and the, the offense is is missing Big Ben that much, then James Conner he will see volume, but it's going to be very ineffective well I mean what's the recipe you know the recipe to to beat the Steelers in previous years was you know can we contain Juju and Antonio Brown right now the recipe is let's make Mason Rudolph beat us through the air because he can't yeah he, he was throwing the ball behind receivers he was you know he had a couple of good plays but Juju really made that big play and then uh, he did have a nice pass to what was it Deontay Johnson yes mm -hmm. that's a name for the waiver wire show tomorrow that we need to mention but uh, we can put Connor in the panic room for Wednesday. Certainly. Uh, Josh Jacobs, 10 for 44, no catches. This was a stinker. But against Minnesota coming off the injury, yeah, Mike, this was, you, you said it all week. This was very expected for me. If, if, I had a, if I had a horizontal option, like a lateral move I could make for Josh Jacobs, I wanted him on my bench. It'll be there'll be better days ahead for Josh Jacobs. We didn't mention him in the stud muffins, but Ronald Jones was 14 for 80, one for 40 through the air. Had a good game. Peyton Barber in this one, 13 for 48, outperformed by Ronald Jones. What do you do with these guys? Not, I mean, it's just, I ask the same question every week. I, I don't want any of them. I just – I mean, if you have to have one, I guess Ronald Jones at least has <laughs> right, the but, hope, but I just don't want him. I but don't. last week it was, well, I guess Peyton Barber has the volume. Like, it, I think that this split is just going to continue to be this. I don't believe that anyone – will establish the fact dominance. that last week out of the blue it was all Peyton Barber this week it started out where it was all Ronald Jones I don't want to play the guessing game I agreed so I'm um, for those reasons I'm out shark, shark tank. tank all right <laughs> Devontae Adams four for 56 oh, on four man. targets he's a panic room contender as well because you know week one against Chicago he was the 67th wide receiver Okay, it's Chicago. Okay, they're figuring it out. Let's not let's forgive him. 
Week two against Minnesota at home, he was number 19. Yeah, yeah. it was great. Seven for 106. Did you say great? He Se was seven for 106. He had 106 yards and seven receptions against Minnesota. That's You're happy with that. I mean, you want a touchdown. Sure, you but, I mean, for the guy that was drafted to be the number one overall by some people, 67-19, and then in this game, four for 56, you haven't gotten anything that's in that wide receiver one category. So I'm, I'm kind of asking – do, are you changing your expectations for Devontae Adams because this offense, you know, it's a brand new offense. They're using him differently. Right. They're using other players differently. They're choosing not to be, you know, they're, they're not an efficient offense right now. So Yes, I will say I, I'm concerned about the usage of Devontae Adams because it was why he was so safe was that he was an absolute target machine. But but to speak to your point of I me, mean, Devontae Adams was taken as the number one or the number two guy. The other guy over there was Hopkins, and Hopkins the past two weeks five for forty, six for sixty-seven. I mean, it's that's not that's not any better than what Devontae Adams is doing. So if if you're concerned, well, let me. I, I'm trying to or, say tangibly. Let's say you have Devontae Adams, sure. And we've talked about Rodgers and the offense and what it's looked like, and they have the Philadelphia Eagles on Thursday night. Then they go to Dallas. Then they play Detroit, who's playing well. So are you kind of just holding course with Adams, or are you tr would you want to laterally move based on his name uh, for the duration of the season? Because you can kind of trade Devontae Adams on the name. Poss like you like know, if you would what, go from Devontae like, would you Adams trade to Keenan Allen. Perfect example. Oh, my goodness, yes. But the person who has Keenan Allen is not going to do that. What about Mike Evans? Oof. You know, because this is an adjusted right. view of Devontae Adams. If, you're, you know, if we say yes to these offers, this is not the guy that he was last year. I think I, I would rather have Adams than Evans. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I would make the move to Evans. You think they'll get things figured out, maybe, in Green Bay with enough grimaces from it's possible. Look, Aaron Rodgers? Philadelphia secondary can help some things. Well, it, you know, how many weeks is it going to go on before Aaron Rodgers just goes, yeah, I'm just going to do my own thing? And I, that, his own thing is throwing to Devontae Adams. That part is true, yeah. His own thing. My own the problem thing. is they're winning. Like that. I mean, the issue for Devontae Adams right. and for fantasy, you know, uh, you know hopes – is that the, the Green Bay Packers defense is much, much better, so they're not needing to do as much. They want to run the ball, slow the ball down. You know, it's it's not the offensive output you hope for, and they're winning. They're three and oh, and yikes. All right, stinkers from Kenny Galladay and Stephon Diggs. The the Stephon Diggs one is panic. It's three, he had three targets. He caught them all, but he was three for fifteen. Kenny Galladay he had eight targets. Marvin Jones was the one who came away with, with the, the big game. Unfortunate. I really liked Galladay heading into this weekend. But the target volume was still there. He gets Kansas City next week. There's, It's a bad game for Kenny Galladay. Let, Stephon Diggs, you put him on the bench. He's concerning. Very concerning. So I'll go through the rest of these wide receiver stinkers. Tell me if you're concerned or it's just a blip in the radar. So for Diggs, you're concerned. Yes. Calvin Ridley, one just target. A, just a blip. Blip. Godwin, three for 40. Not blip. worried. Robert Woods, three for 40. I still think a blip. Yeah, I'm not John worried. Ross, uh, two for 22. It was pretty expected for him to have a, a down game. Two for 22 is in Buffalo. Is even worse than I had anticipated for him, but I think he will be all right next week against Pittsburgh. Emmanuel Sanders, two for 10. Uh, uh, a concern in the sense that. 0 and 3 team. Concerned in the sense that, you know, Green Bay was a good defense. Now they go to Jacksonville. Yikes. We'll need to monitor what's going on with Jalen Ramsey. He's got the flu. Yeah. You're going to see a team <laughs> doctor to confirm the quote-unquote flu. <laughs> <laughs> I got the black lung, Pa. Marquise Brown, two for 49 on nine targets. Had nine targets. Look, okay. This is the time to acquire him. That's sure. what I would do. Sure. So let's have a quick discussion about Lamar Jackson. Because it's been, I mean, he, fantasy wise, it has been incredible. He's said he's been an absolute stud for fantasy to start the year. But week one against Miami, he looked like he had turned into one of the best passers in the league. Week two, or week two, you're like, uh, it was still pretty good. And then week three, he had the matchup against Kansas City where people are able to throw the ball, and it wasn't so great throwing the ball for Lamar Jackson. Where so where are you for his fantasy output? Is he locked in like okay for Lamar or for yeah, Mark for Fusebert? Lamar for Lamar? You're like he's he is that top three guy that he has been these 
these first few weeks, or I, I wouldn't, do you need to adjust your expectations? I mean, I don't think he's top three, but I, okay. I think he's a top ten. His rushing baseline means I don't really care if his passing is off this week or the week after next or whatever because he can run for 100 yards and still throw only one touchdown and 225 I think, yards I think be he fun. fundamentally didn't have the tools – available like he didn't have the experience or the weapons last year to do you know to have the burst games in the passing game he has those things available to him so if, if you know like Jason said if, if it's a rushing week one week kind of inefficient then he has the tools with Marquise Brown you know you give Marquise Brown nine targets you know he only came good down with two happen, but yeah. good things are going to happen mm -hmm. That couldn't happen last year when you could only target Willie Sneed. So and, and Mark Ingram had three touchdowns. You know, it, yep. So that takes away from Lamar Jackson I would, being able to do. I'd be nine targets to me. That's the headline for Marquise Brown. Like I would be targeting him on the basis that he is clearly far and away the number one in this offense. They play Cleveland at home, then Pittsburgh, Cincinnati. There are some opportunities in the future for those guys. So if you can buy low on Marquise Brown or Mark Andrews based on a bad week. You know, I would do that. There were several plays where Lamar just missed these guys. So, Mike Williams, three for 45 on seven targets, did not receive nearly the work that Keenan Allen did. Keenan was just <laughs> open. A couple deep shots to Mike Williams. I, I can't believe he had seven targets. I, I mean, that's so you, impressive. You were bewildered throughout the entire day. You just felt like, to, to me, the way you reacted to Keenan Allen yesterday is you thought he had 50 catches and 600 yards. I can't believe he didn't. I mean, every single time I looked at that screen, it was Keenan Allen. Uh, like, what did Keenan Allen have, 17 targets? Yeah. I think I genuinely think, like, the person tracking that missed, like, 20 or 30 they, of those targets. They got bored and they stopped counting. Do you yes. remember when Brandon Marshall had the 20-catch game? No, I don't, I don't remember that. Yeah, I think he had a 20-catch game. It might have been on a Monday Night Football mm -hmm. game. It just remind sometimes Brandon Marshall would you know the hyper targeted type of situation you just if the play goes on long enough you can't guard Keenan Allen it does no. not matter who you are so you protect Rivers now they're one and two right mm -hmm. so they they've been struggling and Jason asked the question yesterday would they be one and two with with Melvin Gordon I don't know I don't know if they would be so uh, tight end stinkers Mark Andrews mm. it was another. Hawk strap week. TJ Hawkinson, one for one. Everybody who Look, spent up on him on Fab Dollars is now what do you do? He had, do you cut him? But here's the hard part. because So he had four targets. The three that he did not catch. The one, well, maybe this one got pulled off of the books because of penalties, but they he caught a touchdown. Uh-huh. Back of the end zone, early in the game. But apparently he had stepped out, so they said, and they didn't. Didn't, didn't look like he did. Detroit but. didn't want to review it for whatever reason. And then he had two really bad drops in the end zone. So, so he was he was that close. He was inches away from being like the top <laughs> tight end on the week, but instead he's one for one and he was a hawk strap. He was a Dropinson. Yeah, yes. TJ Dropinson. Oh, so, got him. No, but for real though. I mean, if you spent fab dollars on him yes, in week one, you're, you've 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 literally put nothing on the field for two weeks at the tight end position. Now you have to decide: do you start him again against Kansas City next week? A game that you would think they have to throw the ball a little bit, but they also I, have to protect Stafford. And I will. You'll start him. I'll go back. Didn't we? Was it the Howard Hawkinson? Was that one of the decisions this week that we were talking about? If you would start OJ Howard or Hawkinson yes. in that matchup, so. Jimmy Graham, no catches. Yeah, move. Jimmy, move, move how on is from Jimmy, Jimmy Graham in the stinkers? Yeah, Brooks. Like, what, what just, are you? What are you thinking? It's just noting that it happened again. You know. Yes, because of course it did. Stinkers of the week presented by Odor Eaters. These guys really need it, by the way. Yeah. Odor Eaters, the best in odor defense. P U. Tonight, Monday Night Football. Trey Burton is questionable. May Trey Burton be? The model example of tight end hype gone wrong, right? Sure. Yeah. I this mean, is why some play. This is why even before the season we loved Darren Waller, but you were kind of, in the back of your mind. You're going, having an athletic profile does not mean you are a productive fantasy tight end if your coach quarterback if there's not a mind meld there. You know, Joni Smith was the you know another example. Oh, this guy he's going to step into the role of Delaney Walker. Nothing happened. Trey Burton is just not happened for Trey Burton. Well, yeah, he also needs, needs to get on the field. Big contract. 
Yeah, it's been disappointing. Want to thank the studio sponsor. You heard Mike talk about him at the top, Pristine Auction. Go to pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. You sign up. You can get $5 off a sports memorabilia purchase like the Mark Ingram sign logo football that was sold yesterday for $41. That's a steal. Very nice. He almost had 41 touchdowns yesterday. (laughs) What a coincidence, Mike. That is it for the show. Enjoy Monday Night Football Waiver Show tomorrow. Panic Room on Wednesday. Starts of the week coming Thursday. Don't miss it. Thanks for supporting the podcast. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.